UEFA have revealed new drug testing plans. Um, from the tw- on the 23rd of May 2013, this was released. UEFA will retrospectively study 900 doping samples given since 2008 as it attempts to combat use of performance-enhancing drugs in European football. Um, Though it will not lead to future punishments, the governing body intends to identify the scale of steroid use. UEFA will also carry out blood testing in more competitions from 2013-2014 and consider using biological passports. Um, The new measures were on the agenda at UEFA's executive committee um, meeting held in London prior to the Champions League final. Um, In February, Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger had asked UEFA several times to implement new drug testing procedures. Um... He went on to he went on to say, when you have a doping when you have a doping control at UEFA, they do not take blood; they only take urine. The sixty three year old said, "I have asked many times at UEFA meetings in Geneva for that to be changed." The World Anti Doping Agency's president has also accused football of not doing enough to stop doping. Um, Talking about um, the blood the blood boosting drug involved in the case of disgraced cyclist Lance Armstrong, John Farhey said, I simply say this about football. They are not testing enough for EPO. Um, they can do they can do more and we encourage them to do more. Previously, blood testing has only taken place at European Championships. The extent of the use of performance enhancing drugs in football was hinted at the Operation Puerto case in Spain. While that investigation, which led to Eufem- Eufemiano Fuentes being found guilty of running one of the large world's largest sports doping rings centered around cyclists the spanish doctor has boasted of a client list that extended into a number of other disciplines it may never be known if that was the case as the blood bags used to convict fuentes had had been at the time ordered to be destroyed um a rule in spain's anti-doping agency aea planned to appeal at the time um now that's an interesting one there but fleetwood town keep staying on the staying on this thread of drugs fleetwood town bang young ban youngster gerard kinsella um sorry fleetwood town youngster gerard kinsella banned for two years after failing drugs test um from tw- this is from 25th of June 2013. The Fleetwood Town midfielder admitted the charge of taking banned substance Nandrolone and won't play again until 2015. Um, a former Everton, former ever the former Everton player um, failed a drugs test and got banned. So it's one of them was the midfielder who the midfielder who um, was on Everton the Toffees books as a youngster has been hit with a 24 month suspension after traces of the banned banned anabolic steroid Nandrolone were found in his sample an FA statement read following an independent regulatory commission here in Fleetwood Towns Gerald Kinsella has been banned has been sorry suspended from football and all football activities for two years subject to any appeal after he admitted an FA charge in relation to breach to a breach of its anti-doping relations Kinsella was charged under FA rule E 25 for a breach of regulation free um, after he gave a sample following an out of competition test um, which contained the pres- presence of um, a prohibited substance namely nandrolone listed as an anabolic androgenic steroid um, in the 2013 prohibited list of the world anti-doping code um, the player who requested a personal hearing will serve a 24th um, match um, suspension commencing um, the 5th of February 2013 backdated um, to the date of the sample collection until um, February 4th 2015 inclus- and that's inclusive as well um Kinsella actually had yet to make a first team appearance for Fleetwood since arriving and was farmed out to non-league Telford last season scoring once in seven games um, so you know what the verdict has been made public had been made public by the FA and at the time Fleetwood Town had no further comment now the thing the thing with the the thing with this um, the, 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 the thing with this there's, a, there's obviously a lot there's obviously a lot to um taken about that and there's been a lot in the Skype chat as well um, at the, but, at, but at the but, <coughs> but at the at the end at the end of the day there's there's a, there's also there's also been um, something that has also come out in regards to Turkish football as well which came out today on um, Monday 5th of August 2013 
Um, there is no systematic doping in Turkish football, FIFA said um, today on Monday, um, after launching an investigation following a spate of drug violations in athletics. FIFA explained in a statement that it had contacted the Turkish FA, which agreed to reassess the samples taken over the past year. In total, more than 600, more than 600 samples were reassessed and the initial findings have shown not one single suspicious result, FIFA added. FIFA is very satisfied about those findings. We took the decision to investigate further because of the very alarming report reports in the media, said Chief, Chief Medical Officer Jiri um, Dvorak. Dvorak. Um, the outcome is clear. There are no signs of systematic doping in Turkish football. The Turkish Athletics Association now announced on Monday um, that 31 athletes had been banned for two years for doping violations. Now, you know what, yeah? There's a few of the Skypers I, I can see are conversing in the Skype chat. Pitch Talk 1 on Skype, add us, um, and join in the conversation as well. Now, there's been a lot of chat in Skype, in Skype, in our Skype chat about this. A lot of intelligent chatter, which is always good, and which is is what we have. Now, the thing is, now that now the thing now now for me the now for me the thing is, um, UEFA introduce UEFA introducing introducing new drug testing plans. Fine, okay. I've got I've got no problem with that, but they need to be very stringent. If you're going to test blood and urine, you, I think it's one of them ones where I think it's one of them ones where you need to be testing for absolutely everything, not just banned, not just banned substances. And at the end of the day, there shouldn't be this. This is very for me. This is very similar to um, professional wrestling, where their drug testing policy has been. That exposed to have glaring loopholes in it. In, in for those who are um, WWE fans, you will have heard something called the wellness policy, where apparently there are huge loopholes in it. Um, apparently, there's like huge loopholes where you could drive a bus through them. Um, I watched a, C- a CNN report from back in I think it was like 2007 where they were saying that. And the thing, the thing is, Gerald Kinsella being banned for two years, good. At the end of the day, if you're failing drug tests, you need to be, but you do need to be banned. But then it brings up the interest. It does bring up an interesting thing. I mean, there was the Colo Torre thing a year ago, which we commented on. Which how long, how long was Torre? How long was Torre banned for? He was banned. He was banned. Was it a year he was banned for? Something, something along those lines. Something like that, or he avoided it, or something like that. But then Rio Ferdinand got banned for nine months for missing the drug test. So there's quite a lot of glaring inconsistency, to be honest. There, there's a lot of inconsistency with it. You've got people getting banned for missing drugs tests, but then, but then you've got other people not getting significantly long bans for failing drugs tests. And it's just, it's just weird that Gerald Kinsella got a two, got a two, got a two-year ban, and. Rio Ferdinand got nine month ban just for missing the test. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's just very, just very, very odd. I mean, even you look at Yap Stam, you look at you look at Yap Stam, and and yeah, thank you for that. Um Colo Toy was, was banned for six months. Um, so thank you for that micro spectrum. Um it's one of them was where you had Yap Stam who was banned for for a while. Um I think it was whilst he was at Man United. It's it's one it's one of them ones. So it's one of them ones. You've had a lot of players who I th- I think per- I think pers- I think personally, it should it should be a ca- it should be a case of dependent on actually no not even dependent on substance I think it's one of them was if you're do- I think it's one of them was if you're doping you should be punished harshly you should be punished har- you should be punished harshly and in a dracon- in a draconian fashion. And well, it's one of them. It's one of them was. Yes, yeah, Samir's got it right. Lifetime ban for doping, because at the end, because at the end of the day, you should be punished in a very draconian fashion for it. Because you're ba- you're basically illegally getting an advantage over your fellow professional. I know the of course the narrow it's narrow margins in football, and there's so much money riding on it. But that's why. But that's why people should not be allowed to get those those ad- kind of advantages. If you're not as strong as someone else, or if you're not as good as someone else, mate, you need to work harder. Don't cheat, because cheating, because cheating is, is similar to diving. It's one of them ones. Stuff like, I mean, cheating is one of them ones. 
as much as I hate it, footballers are role models. And I don't like, I don't like the fact that footballers are role models, but they are. And if they're cheating, they're making it acceptable to the youngers coming up. They're making it acceptable. They're making it look acceptable. And once something creeps in to an area as acceptable, such as say racism, racism back in the 70s and 80s used to be acceptable because no one used to bat an eyelid. It was only it was only because certain people started standing up against it that it became non not acceptable. And at the end of the day, if cheating is rife and becomes acceptable, then people just see it as a norm. And it's like, no, it shouldn't be that way. It really shouldn't be that way. And at the end of the day, if you start handing out, if you start handing out draconian bans, then people are gonna realize, oh my god, I can't get away with this. But there are some from what I know, there are things like steroid derivatives that are harder, that are probably harder to detect and, and, and that kind of thing. And there's so many different types of steroids. And there's stuff like human growth hormone. Like, um, like, um, like what's his face? Um, Lionel Messi. Yeah, Messi's very well publicized that he has been, when he was growing up, was pumped full of HGH. And for me, that shouldn't be allowed. That shouldn't be allowed. Because he's pumped full of that and look how he's developed and now he's the best player in the world arguably so you gotta say that them feeding him full of human growth hormone when he was growing up had to have had a part to play in his development because if he didn't develop as well as he did he might not be the player he is now now it's been discovered that Neymar's got a blood deficiency as well I've heard that yeah so it's it's one of them ones it's it's a really it's a really kind of screwed kind of screwed thing um you, you know oh, touching on to this year it, it kind of makes me squirm when, when speaking about subject because i think oh, i want to send a big um, shout out to jesse fizzle because i'm going to use one of his terms um you know i think this drug situation is bigger than football it's it's oh, it, 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 it's 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 bigger than life it's you know in all walks of life there there are drugs problems out there mm. you know and you know Again, taking off the PC hat and trying to be politically correct and everything like that, we all we all know someone that's taken drugs or done drugs, whether it's performance enhancing or, or, or not, or recreational. Our, pr- our prime minister said he's done it before. Yeah, you know. Well, and look it, at the recreation. Look at the recreational you know, drugs mentioned in the four for two magazine survey. Yeah, but fifty percent agreed recreational drugs yeah. were used by some footballers, and fifty percent mentioned knowledge of cocaine. Use. Yeah, so and those are serious drugs. Then. Yeah, the the thing the the issue is yeah, it's going back to a point Samir is always talking what was it say? well me you some man jersey fizzle basically rounded off with the whole point of people coming out and speaking about yeah. um speak speaking about issues if people ain't speaking about it and people in sport are not going to speak about their peers doing drugs yeah. you know for it instance under the rug for instance one of the biggest cases to me yeah would have to be linford christie mm-hmm. yeah because as a youth growing up him barcelona and then after that you know it was just a the incredible downfall of Linford Christie after that drugs thing and then it repeated with Dwayne Chambers yeah I was going to say you know, him yeah you know and then you know what you had Mark Bosnich you yeah. know you Adrian know, Mutu now, who was now, mentioned all of these people are surrounded by peers you know who must be involved um, you know who, who who know where these people are you know wh- whatever drug it is where they're getting it from you know whether it's recreation or whether it's you know an actual growth hormone or whether it's like you know, something to enhance whatever it is they need to enhance within their body to make them physically better but it, yeah it's just larger it's, it's just it's, it's for me it's such a great area to talk about because it, just thinking about it it's like it's cat and mouse mm. it's a game yeah. you know whoever gets caught you're just unlucky mm. and everyone else oh you're stupid with it or you're stupid with it and then everyone else is just going to be silent about it it's just going to be you like Neil Armstrong when he was oh, Lance when, Armstrong, Lance yeah, Armstrong yeah, yeah, yeah. when the focus was on him it was like yeah yeah it was Lance everyone yeah everyone knew it was Lance mm. but everyone knew he was taking drugs they were saying but and oh disgraceful ashamed of him but no one can tell us anything other than oh yeah we're just disgraced with him he's shameful blah 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 yeah. and then 
you know, next minute another person gets knocked down in the Tour de France. Another person, another person names come up. Little names start coming mm. up. People doing. Well, you've got athletics with Tyson Gay and Asafa Powell, and now they're trying to drag you Usain Bolt's name through the mud. And it's like, it's, no, you ain't found. You ain't. You haven't found anything on him. He said he's clean. You've tested him. The guy's clean. But um, then you know it's what? like guilty by association. Talking around the houses. All I'm trying to, because I'm just talking around the houses and going around circles. All I'm trying to say is, yeah, it's like nothing's going to get solved with this drugs problem that's mm. that's it to me nothing's going to get solved yeah. it's just you're going to get a few unlucky few that are going to get caught no one's yeah. actually pushing forward to solve this drugs problem yeah that yeah and, that, that's, that, and, that's the and when i say yeah. no one i'm not saying you know you have you have got your f- task forces out there that are trying to you know correct a problem but mm. the people who already count are the silent people yeah um yeah, who are around that individual or individuals, they're not going to say anything. So yeah, it's yeah, never going to... Yeah, gonna, gonna, yeah you know, people they're, are going to be alibis. protected. I mean, people are going to be protected. And that's it's interesting you bring that up because um, there was a documentary, I think, on Channel 4 a few years back. It was Channel 4 the BBC a few years back where the FA had covered up a lot of names of people who had been found with performance-enhancing drugs in their systems. The FA would, would actually hit it. So it's a case of when you've got the powers that be hiding it, mm. what hope have we got to getting drugs out of football? And they, I think there clearly is drugs in football. I mean, yeah, yeah. people, some people in with that inordinate need to push themselves further, harder, be bigger, be stronger, be faster. People are gonna, people are gonna bend the rules, bend the rules. Look at financial fair play. People are already bending rules with that. If yeah. you're gonna bend rules with finances, what what difference is it gonna make if you're bending rules with other stuff as well? No surprise. I mean Samir Sawney has said in the Skype chat, not football, but I was pretty shocked by some way, but in some ways by the MLB situation. A Rod banned for the rest of this season and throughout all of 2014. Need that sort of banning going on in football. Um EPO is definitely an issue. Um, the new Nandrolone um, mentioned the Juventus story about the drug story revolving around the alleged use by um, the club towards players in the mid to late 90s and a lot of it was allegedly and he also said the Kinsella story is very sad as he had rebuilt his whole life, whole, uh, whole life but his career is all but over and he's also said he remembers the Dutch national team in the last decade with Nandrolone allegedly laced in their food and um, and all, and also it's one, that, it's one of them ones where um, it's like casual use versus performance enhancing. Do players ever question what they're given? <laughs> and, and he's also said the Cora Torre case was an interesting one as it happens a fair amount in athletics, e.g. asthma pumps, golf had it too with nose sprays. They all have chemicals in them that of course enter the bloodstream and cause issues. Um, is it really fair on players? So, I mean, clubs, have, clubs seem um, to be quite happy to have doctors employed um, to do all sorts. And he's talked about massive um, issues in wrestling and huge chasms in their um, concept as well so it's one of them was the last Armstrong thing is an interesting one but I mean the drug, the drugs in football thing I mean you wait for bringing in new drug testing plans we need to hear that from the FA we need to hear that from FIFA as well like we were saying a minute ago in terms of Liverpool's document it's a case of a united front is needed to eradicate drugs I mean, Jesse Fizzle, welcome home to the third man in the trifecta that is your Monday Night Football Fix. Jesse Fizzle, how goes it? And would you like to jump in on the health and football segment? You know, I will jump in on the health and football segment, but before I do that, I just want to sing a little song. <laughs> Go on, feel free. And for those who don't understand that reference, if you were in Finsbury Park at let's say what around about six around about six six thirty on um on on Sunday yesterday. Those Galatasaray fans were brilliant. That's what they were chanting in Fisbury Park Station. <laughs> Loved it. Those Gal- those Galatasaray fans. There was a little pocket in North Bank who were brilliant. They were absolutely brilliant. But Jesse, I- <laughs> how goes it, dude? Anyway, back to the story. No, um, 
back to the more serious stuff, drugs and football. No, I, I think testing is what's needed. Honestly, t- testing is what's needed. And I think, you know, Samir brings up an excellent point about the players and athletes themselves. Um, it is very much about, well, hang on a minute, you have to have some sort of responsibility uh, for yourself, some mm. accountability for yourself. You can't be trusting all of these people that happen to be giving you these things. You know, you have to at some point say, well, hang on a minute, if I've not prepared this myself or if it really isn't somebody that I trust, then, you know, can I afford to trust these people? And even then, it's a matter of even if you do trust these people, do the people that you trust have your best interests at heart? You know, it's very much a case of who's playing who. And in the NFL, you know, to kind of give another sort of uh, reference, you know, there's lots of talk about human growth hormone. Um, I think there was talk about deer antler spray, for example, um, when Ray Lewis, who's now retired, came back from his injury mm. that had him out for several weeks and he managed to go and, you know, perform at a really high level in the postseason without too much problems. I mean, he was wearing an absolutely massive brace. Yeah but he was able to perform to a quite a high level and his team ended up winning the Super Bowl. So, you know, even in the NFL, they're talking about, look, we kind of need to have more testing to have a look at, you know, who's taking uh, human growth hormones and who's not. So I just think generally in sport, there needs to be more testing. We need to go and look at, um, even in the playing field, mm. to be honest with you. It's more about... You know, if you want to have a separate league where everybody's taking you know, a cocktail of things, fair enough, you can go and do that. Mm. But as far as, you know, the fans are aware, the basic rule of the game was all about, look, it's all about natural ability. It's not about, you know, what else you can put in your body to make you perform better. Mm. It's never been about that. So yeah. I think strict testing is the way to go. And mm. obviously after that, there's got to be punishments to go with it as well. But defeat, yeah, I, got, I agree with you totally. And the thing is... And the thing is, you brought up it, and it obviously a couple of examples from other sports, but it's like, it, it, it's a case of look at, I've, I've, I've been watching the um, the WWF, WWE Raws from 2002. And look at when, look at when Triple H got injured in mid-2001, come back eight, nine months later, he was, he was more, he was, he was, he was already huge anyway, but he was, he came back after nine, eight, nine months out, even bigger than when he left. And it's like, Mate, some kind of substance has to be getting abused there, and the fa- and the fact of the, the fact of the matter is the fact of the matter is that I I wouldn't want football going the same way as wrestling, where because of the, uh, this cocktail of drugs that that people that people are taking, you start getting dudes dropping dead at forty, dropping dead at fifty, and or even worse, getting into situations such as Scott Hall and Jake Roberts where them guys are fighting for their lives. So it's one of them it's one of them ones, man. It's you don't want that kind of situation. I wouldn't want it anyway. So I don't know. I mean Tom Wood, you you wanted to jump in on this point as well, didn't you? Yeah, like talking about uh like like you know medication and all that. Yeah. Like I was talking to a South End player a couple like a month ago and he, like he had a chest infection. I said to him, what do you have to take? to uh, get rid of it he just says drink plenty of water but he said like, I asked him about Lemsip and they're allowed to take that but he said no they're not allowed to take it because there's a drug a specific drug in it apparently yeah I didn't know what drug it was he didn't say mm. but I mean and the, the Kinsilla's one's quite bad as well to be honest he's mm. the one who's ruined his career yeah I mean it is it is a shame but I mean at the end of, but I mean at the end of the day if you're taking drugs and doping then you need to get then you need to get punished and for yeah. me for me it's for me it's as simple as that so yeah, why, why not somebody who gave it to him in a taxi or something why not his brother or something gave it to Kinsid or something I, I, I don't know those did those details those details didn't didn't come with the um, the story that we that we had um, yeah. but it's one it's one of them so I, I would I would like leave that as kind of a rumor but even so it's a case of you got you got to be careful with what you're taking you got to be you got to be careful yeah i mean it kind of just reiterates the point i was making earlier that you know these athletes now because they're earning so much money because they're 
held in such high regard because they're essentially on pedestal you know they do have to go and have a accountability for themselves and their actions so literally if anybody gives them anything you know essentially you'd want to test everything now like you know it literally is to steve austin's credo don't trust anybody mm. just because you have no idea who's out there trying to sabotage your career mm. do you see what i mean yeah. now to give an example specific example of a new york giants player will hill who's going to be serving a suspension at the start of the new season for about four games right he failed a drugs test for marijuana uh quite a few times last season but the charges have only really been brought forward to the end of the end of the season to start a new season and the ban will only take place in a new season right he went back to his hometown one guy that he knows had him at gunpoint telling him listen you need to give me some money yeah. or I'm going to shoot you in the face <laughs> right oh my god and I'm, I'm I'm looking at it like this if this is what's happening to other sports people right where they're around certain people that they thought were their friends is it really really too much of a stretch to go and say well you know maybe these same people that you think are your friends will do something like I don't know give you something that has a drug in it that you know they're aware is banned Mm. just to sabotage you mm. you know now I'm, I'm not saying that everybody is like that or has friends like that or will go out of their way to do something like that to somebody in the public eye in sports mm. I'm not saying that but I'm just saying that these new icons in sports shall we say need to be much more aware have much more accountability for themselves and their actions even if that means saying to a lot of people, look, no, I'm sorry, I can't take that. Yeah. Or no, I don't know what that is. Or I can't risk my sponsorship deals. I can't risk my contract with my club. I can't risk my income that's paying for the life that I'm living. Mm. Essentially making sure that I can go and, um, you know, turn around and say, well, look, if you need anything, I can back and sort that out for you to go and give me that and for me to take it and for it to turn out there's banned substance in there. Mm. No, you know, so I, personally I, I just think now it's it's a matter of the athletes and I, I say that because it's, it's a problem across all sport mm. it's not just football no, know, of course so not. these okay. athletes and you know to take it back specifically to football the footballers themselves have to go and say look unless it's something I've made myself unless it's something I've consciously made a decision to do myself as in I've, I know what's in it I've taken it myself mm-hmm. they can't risk it they mm. can't risk it because the other side of it is if you know the powers that be in football are serious about looking to you know tackle the issue of drugs you know if the council of wisdom <laughs> are serious about you know really putting together some sort of plan and actually looking like the you know the three or four wise men or whatever they are mm. then it means that the punishments for these type of things will be severe mm. You know, and if they are going to be severe, then is it really worth you taking the risk? Probably not. So, like I say, I think it's more about accountability from the footballers themselves to say, well, look, we don't actually want you to, you know, I don't want to take the, I don't want to risk anything. Mm. Yeah, it's too much of a risk. Um, Versus, you know, them saying, oh, but it was this person that did it, gave it to me and I wasn't really aware of all the rest of it. Like, listen, the mere fact that you've had all of these other people go through a similar situation, right? And then go and have to face the consequences, you need to go and take some accountability for yourself and actively go and say, I'm not going to let that happen to me, as opposed to being a victim. Yeah. But see, this is the thing in terms of accountability. It's it's that kind of thing. The whole The whole accountability thing is one of them ones where... Like a lot of footballers or and athletes generally don't want to take don't want they don't want to get in trouble. So I think some of them deny accountability on purpose so that they avoid getting in trouble. Like the Colo like the Colo Toro thing that we mentioned a year ago. It's yeah. like, wait, your wife, you took your wife's diet pills. Wait, firstly, why would you be taking them? And secondly, you had to know that there's something in there that if it's gonna make you drastically lose weight, there's gotta be something not right in it. So stuff like that. I mean, even the real Ferdinand one, when he missed, yeah, he missed the drugs test. 
But then if you miss a drugs test in the way that he did, oh, I just forgot about it. Man, you don't forget about something that serious. So it looks like you've got something to hide. I think it might have been reasonable suspicion why he got banned, but it's like yeah. it's but it's this inconsistency where he gets banned for nine months for nine months for that, and Kinsella for failing a drug test because Nandro gets banned for two years. It's, yeah, it, it's this glaring inconsistency. Yeah. So people yeah, are thinking. No, so people are thinking. Some people might be. I mean, like like with the Carlos Tevez thing, apparently, 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 um, apparently, someone, someone to try and dodge a drive dodge um, driving offences and get penalised for that said well but look at what Carlos Tevez did use that as a defence apparently someone recently used that as a defence and it's like mate you, you're going to get a lot of copycat cases where certain people might conveniently miss a drugs test because they had something in their system but they get retested and by the time they do get retested they're clean because it's gone out of the system so you've got people Unless these tests are really stringent, it's got to be random. It's got to be random. At the very least, it's got to be random drug tests and stringent stuff. Like, whether it be... Um, I think recently Ibrahimovic had one where he was literally just coming off the pitch. It's like, yeah, drug test, come out, random. Boom, do it. I would say do that and do that a lot more often because it doesn't give... Because it doesn't then give them the chance to try and get it out of their system. It's like, if it's still there... You're getting caught, but this is going to be one that's going that's going to go on though, mm. as more but people you know, get banned. But I think more people need to be banned, and that's the thing. You can't have the powers that be hiding people's identities yeah. who, have, who have been accused of doping or any of that. You want to make that you want to make that public because if you don't make that public, then people don't know about it, and if people don't know about it and don't see a warning, a preventative warning then they're just going to keep doing stuff. Yeah. And you, you know, I, I want to take something that Jesse said earlier on about potentially people sabotaging people's careers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because I've had an experience where, you know, I've stopped drinking for this year. Um, alcohol, I just wanted to go on a one year sabbatical. So that, that basically took me out going out raving with some friends and whatnot and doing certain, you know, we're, like going to the pub and whatnot, you know, just so, you know, I'm not around people that are drinking because... Yeah. But it's more preventative but, 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 measures but, but, rather than because when you're when you're around people in certain environments, you feel that you want to do certain things. Yeah, you end up getting tempted. Yeah, Don't leave tempted. leave me not so, into temptation. You know, for, for but, I am not that strong. You know, that. but when it comes to birthdays and stuff, you know, I want to honor honor my brethren's birthdays and stuff like that, and go out with them. So, for instance, myself, I went out with. My, my good brethren and you know I don't hold nothing against him for it it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's just what Ger it's just tallying to what Gerald has said like so they were everyone was doing shorts everyone was buying drinks I was buying orange juice because orange juice is the new juice yeah 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 <laughs> yeah I heard that. and um, but I put my orange juice down came went away came came back picked up my orange juice sniffed it and it was smelling of vodka yeah you know friend, a friend's joke but you know just yeah, heightening, a friend, a friend, heightening a what Gerald has said. If you're you know, an athlete, that could be any of that could, could be laced be anything, with anything. Yeah, I'm saying so. It is people. It's, it's the scrupulous people out there, and I just want to heighten that with Gerald because that's yeah, just, yeah, that's no, a friend. A you point. get me? That's a friend just yeah, having a, a friend's it's a friendly joke. Rib, yeah, you get me a friendly rib, but you know, it's crazy. Mm. <laughs>